Hi everyone, welcome to today's Peace of Peace. I started off this morning, it's a gorgeous Saturday morning here and the sun is shining and the air is warm, the breeze is warm, I absolutely love that. So um, just my dialogue with God this morning was, I absolutely love the warm air and the sunshine today, thank you. The birds are singing and the joy I feel waking up to this beautiful morning. So grateful. Thank you for worship music streaming through the atmosphere of our home and my heart. So last night, I had been sort of talking in the past about letting worship fill the air of our homes because it changes the atmosphere. God's been talking to me about bringing my music outdoors and my worship of him outside. So I, um, I was just jotting down a few things that he might be asking me to do. And I know some musician friends in the area of where I live. And um, so I thought I'd start to ask if they would be interested in um, keeping a social distancing, keeping up with social distancing, but um, setting up so that we could play out over our pond because there's many houses that sort of surround this body of water and neighbors that could hear beyond that but um, just knowing that God wants to put that worship in the open air you know like when you go for a walk sing worship to him let that go into the air let it change the atmosphere it certainly changed the atmosphere in the time of Jehoshaphat so I want to I'll keep reiterating this but I feel a sense a deep sense of this worship is going to change things and um, bring about God's um, God's presence into to the area. So as if he's not there already, but our understanding of his presence there. So I, I said, I um, the birds are singing and the joy I feel waking up to this beautiful morning. Just so grateful for it. Thank you for worship music streaming through the atmosphere of our home and my heart. So I'd put on worship music overnight, just sort of put it on like one volume and just let it permeate just the atmosphere of our home. I said to him, so, so good to have that singing over me as I slept and how it fills my entire being with peace. Like I slept great last night. It causes my mind to be playing the powerful and truth-filled lyrics as I wake up to a new day and does not allow the enemy space in my head for condemning thoughts, worry, judgments, hashing of past regrets, it fills that sacred space as I wake with Philippians 4, 8, 9. So I woke up just having this, these lyrical content of worship on my heart and the peace that sort of it filled me with and the joy it filled me with. But Philippians 4, 8, and 9 say, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So having this music, which was filled with truth about God, um, his presence and adoration towards him, these are the things that my mind got to ruminate in overnight. It's like a good marinade. Um, verse 9 says, Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or... Um, seen in me put it into action and the god of peace will be with you so there was just an incredible peace as that worship filled the atmosphere of my home as it filled my spirit as i woke up and there's this, this beautiful sacred space when you first wake up that either there's going to be rushing in uh, enemy condemnation worry about the day what you have to get done uh, you know just that 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 feeling of having to get going get going get going or there's this settlement there's just this sacred space like when there's when worship is happening in the middle of that there's no space for the enemy to come in or your th own thoughts to come in or somebody else's thoughts to come in or words to come in that can take you out of his presence you're just in that it was a beautiful space so that was my before devotion emotions <laughs> before devotions writings then we went into luke 22 14 through 23 which i'll read when the hour came, Jesus, and this is, he. let me set it up a little bit. He's talking to the disciples at the Last Supper. He's talking about communion and how important this is. Communion is a way to remember what Jesus did for us. So 
I'm going to start in 14. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover um, with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking, after taking um, the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with me on the table. He was speaking of Judas. And the Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to the man who betrays him. They began questioning among themselves which of them might be the one who would do this. The devotion today, um, going back to that scripture piece, there's something incredibly powerful in remembering. I remember yesterday, or maybe even the day before, I talked about how... um, remembering Susie Larson had put out uh, on a Sunday evening with her husband Kevin uh, just a live Facebook feed and she had sort of done an acronym for dream and in the R the R was remembering the powerful things that God has done in our lives remember when you were at your very best filled with joy when you were moving in the very best of who you were Remember the powerful things he's done in your life. The enemy wants us to rehearse, as Susie put it, our past wounds, our pains, what's been done to us, our past sins. Just ruminate, 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 ruminate. God wants us to remember his power and how that impacted our lives. Not ruminate over past wounds, which keep us from moving in God's power. So there's a big piece in remembering what Jesus did for us through the practicing of communion when we break bread with each other, when we drink wine um, or juice together, remembering what he did on the cross and the power that that has. Incredible. So hang on to that. And then the writer of the devotion was Bill Crowder. And this is in Our Daily Bread. Of course, download the the app or order the booklet. It says, In his book, Restless Faith, theologian Richard Mao talks about the importance of remembering the lesson of the past. He quotes um, sociologist um, Robert Bella, who said that healthy nations must be communities of memory. Bella extends that principle to another societal bond, such as families. Remembering it is important, it's an important part of living in community. The scriptures teach the value of community memory as well. The Israelites were given the Passover feast to remember them of what God had done to rescue them from slavery in Egypt. Still today, Jewish people around the world revisit that rich community memory every spring. Passover Passover holds great meaning for followers of Christ too, for Passover has always pointed to the work of the Messiah on the cross. It was during Passover, the night before the cross, that Jesus established his own memory table, memorial table. Luke twenty two nineteen records, he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, gave it up to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Every time we gather at the Lord's table to celebrate communion, we remember that Christ rescued us from slavery to sin and provides us with eternal life. May the re, may the rescuing love of Jesus, may the rescuing love of Jesus remind us that his cross is worth remembering together. And she writes out, or he writes out a, a question, why is it valuable to take communion with other believers in Jesus? How does the shared event remind you that, of Jesus' sacrificial love? And the prayer he writes, Thank you, Father, for the gift of your Son. Thank you also that he has given us a tangible way to remember his sacrifice whenever we gather at the table. After this, I was challenged to have communion before I have dinner with my kids. 
and just go ahead and break bread and have juice or wine and say, this is, so we remember Jesus and his power every single day. Let it not be mundane. Let it not be taken for granted. But let us come into that reality. Just like worship. When we put that on, we are remembering who he is and the power that he has. And that has power to change the atmosphere. It has, sorry, it has power to change our, our mindset. It has power to change our belief systems, uh, what we're thinking of, how our um, functionality is. Remembering. Just putting that on to help us remember Remembering his power is super important. So this takes us to Jesus Calling, which of course is always our kind of dessert. I don't know about you, but I kind of like dessert. So this is um, Sarah Young. You can download her app, Jesus Calling, or you can buy her book. Living in dependence, living in dependence on me is the way to enjoy abundant life. You are learning to appreciate tough times because they amplify your awareness of my presence. You're learning to appreciate tough times because they amplify your awareness of my presence. Tasks that you used to dread are becoming rich opportunities to enjoy my closeness. When you feel tired, you remember that I am your strength. When you, um, you take pleasure in leaning on me. I am pleased by your tendency to turn to me more and more frequently. Remember how I said moment by moment, drawing ourselves into the practice of his presence? This is so pleasing to him. We're not just going on life on our own, but stopping every time. Just whisper his name when you feel like you're gone. Haven't thought about him for all oh, Jesus. Practicing that over and over again. It's not like, oh, we have to, he's not looking at us like you haven't learned something. It's like every day this is a journey. You're learning to come back to him, come back to him, come back to him, stay in his presence. So he says, when you feel tired, you remember that I am your strength. You, you take pleasure in leaning on me. I am pleased by your tendency to turn to me more and more frequently, especially when you are alone. When you are with other people, you often lose sight of my presence. Your fear of displeasing people puts you in bondage of them, and they become your primary focus. When you realize this has happened, whisper my name, Jesus. This tiny act of trust brings me to the forefront of your consciousness, where I belong. As you bask in the blessing of my nearness, my life can flow through you to others. That is abundant life. So remember him. Remember his power. Remember the powerful things that have done. Remember to bring him into your presence every day. Remember to bring you present to his presence every day. Yeah. Well, there's our piece of peace. God's blessing. <laughs>